Good morning. It is the third week of phase three project week. Um, groups are being dropped in about like 10 minutes. Uh, just curious to see who I'm gonna be partnered up with this time. And yeah. That's in a nutshell, we've come like it's just kind of amazing and it, it, I, I'll admit I got a little emotional yesterday during the lecture because because this is definitely like a full I think I think it was when it, it was when um, Dakota was explaining the the JSON method that we call on the response and how he was like this doesn't turn it turn it into JSON he was like the, the whole explanation of the the response to response JSON right and us having worked with it for so long to now have it have kind of come full circle and know what these responses are and crafting them ourselves. Y'all are y'all are web developers, you know? You can you can quit flat iron, go get a job right now. I don't I don't recommend it though. Stick around for Rails. Rails is cool. Makes things see you know, <laughs> later. <laughs> um but yeah, all of you, all of you can can like build stuff now, right? You can you can write software that like can visualize data. And uh, let me tell you, people are generating data. Um, you're ready. You're ready. Go, go out there. Just just come to class in the meantime. Uh, I guess we have like project stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, sure. Let's let's talk about that. So the guidelines for the project are in um, Canvas, but just to go over it. So we're going to be using everything you've learned um, so far, and also today and tomorrow for this project. So back end, we're going to be using Sinatra. To build your back end and then um, you'll be using react for your front end so front end piece is going to be pretty much the same you've been doing through this program but now you're building your own back ends so that being the case you want to have like a one repo for your front end portion of your project and then one for the back end portion of your project and then just you have many 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 yeah, that was fine. <laughs> I and Troy only two people in our court during the Feeling Friday. Yeah, we no, it was like I guess like a happy hour plus games. We played some alien game and like drunk beer. <laughs> oh, was that the was that the community? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was yeah. pretty cool. It was yeah. Seeing other people yeah. from cohorts, we were yeah. just like yeah. uh, that game was really intense. It was like it's like Among yeah. Us but with aliens. guys I, when i saw the list i was like okay good <laughs> all right so have you guys got oh. any ideas brewing i mean I, I, I feel like we shouldn't overextend ourselves because especially since we're doing you know a react app and an api I think no, for we sure. try to keep it simple and do like a just a one-to-many mm -hmm. yeah uh, like a person like i like this kind of i was kind of thinking of a similar um i guess uh um, domain model, except for I don't know if we're adding a user. I don't know if we have to have those or yeah. That's that uh, seems a little stretchy to me, like stretch goal. <laughs> right. But, yeah, I mean, yes, it could be exactly. totally possible, but but uh, I definitely want to go there. Like, yeah. If, even if it's a stretch goal. Yeah. We can. It's possible. Simplify. Yeah. We see the data. It's like a faker. We can use a faker to make a you know do like whatever data out there, but we can focus more into like important pieces, like you know creating a using Ruby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think so. I have all the unless he says uh, yeah. we're not yeah. feeling anything. I'll say it. Yeah, I don't make unless you get it. Okay. Yeah.
All right, just checking in. Uh, group projects going fine. We're just trying to keep it real simple um, and get done as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, but there's I'm having like car issues, so I need to like run to a car shop and so they can take all my money. And um, yeah, then I have to study. I have a lecture. We have like, I think we have a lecture every day this week on top of the project. So that's, that's lovely. Um, I talked to a student that already finished Flatiron and she warned me about this. She said, you know, they're just going to spring Sinatra on you during your project week. And I was like, eh, it's fine. I can handle it. And now that it's here. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> It's too much. The point that I had a job, and then they were like, ooh, you have a job. That means that someone wanted you, which means we want you. Uh, so the advice that I always give people coming out of a boot camp is don't be too choosy about your first job. You know, view it as something that is there to get experience, to get you in the field, to give you that feeling of, oh, I just stepped into someone else's 4,000 lines of poorly, poorly written code. Uh, and they said, fix this thing. And I said, where? And they said, you'll figure it out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, the cruel joke is that getting that first job is painful and awful. Uh, and it sucks. And it can take anywhere from two weeks to two years. Um, don't worry, it's usually a lot shorter than that. Uh, but I do know people who have gotten rolled out of boot camps. Flatiron tends to be faster. Uh, I will say, I think that the way that they structure things and especially their post-grad care is much better than a lot of the other ones. But, you know, I've known people who rolled out of other boot camps and it took them a year and a half to find a job. Um, and that's Okay, so sucks. if we could talk about that, basically, I mean, because <laughs> that's what a lot of us are kind of fearful of is that phase six between Flatiron and getting a job and... Was there a job that you had, like programming job that you had before Flat, before Amazon? And do you think that having that undergrad degree was advantageous to you? I mean, like, I don't know. How did you leverage your Flatiron experience to really put you out there? So um, I did have a job before Amazon. I worked at a small kind of weird startup over in Kirkland, making under half what I make now. Um, and yeah, I used Flatiron in the way that. Uh, they were really proactive about telling me about like job fairs and things like that to attend. And I PhD in websites. Uh, you have a PhD and like you did your doctoral thesis on a very specific sub niche of things. Um, and the, the point that I try to make by saying that is just that the field has incredible depth in how far you can go in any given direction. And it never hurts to sort of feel out what you like to do early on. Um, because, you know, if you're someone who is like, man, I just love the building process. I just, I really like pressing the build button and then dealing with compilation and framework and dependency errors. If you are that person, so many people will love you so much because no one is that person. No one, no one likes fixing dependencies. It sucks. Um, but I have met people who do, and I think they're insane. Um, <laughs> But, like, if you love security and if doing OAuth is the thing that really makes you happy, go into that and dive deep on it. If you like doing front end, do that. And, like, if you are someone who at this point in your career is, like, it's all front end all the way. If I never see another RESTful stack and if I never have to deal with data types and the way that they connect to each other and the words has many make me sick, uh, then yeah, you can ignore Java. Um, you won't need it where you're going. <laughs> but if you want to be like a mobile developer or ever touch a backend, uh, learn you some Java and some TypeScript. Cool. I think that's great parting advice. Um, Thank you again for taking all your time. This is very generous of you. And it does make me feel like the Flatiron community is something that's a great thing to be part of. Yeah, and I mean, that's, 
yeah, that's the whole thing. I, I think the, one of the best things you get out of a boot camp is the community and each other. Um, as this goes on, more and more of the fellow people in this call and in your cohort are going to become employed. And if you are not the first person to become employed, you now have a person working in tech who you can slap a resume in front of. <laughs> um, it uh, is fine. We've been waiting for all week. You've been putting in some blood, sweat, and tears into these projects. Now, it's time to show them off. Okay. <laughs> tears indeed. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's let's just go through it. So, um, I'm gonna, let's just go in the order of the original list of product groups. So that means Alec, Aporva, and Lisa, y'all are first. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, so we have made an app. Um, where you can add books and then you have experience points and they go up with the number of pages that you have read. So we come to our homepage and you can choose a user to log in as. Um, you'll see all of the books that you've added so far. Let's say, however, that um, you haven't added any books well then you can click on this it takes you to books um if you are logged in you can add a new book but if you uh haven't already added this book to your shelf then there's a button to say add to my books if we go back we'll say that oh i didn't update her uh xp yet well anyway it's not supposed to be 498 but it is right now but if we add ring of bright water it's gone up to 909 and her level has gone up um and okay you can go to users i don't think i'm talking about this part am i uh all right let's say you want to um start off not signed in with anything books you'll see there's no buttons because you're not signed in home let's say you want to add a new user so We fill out our form, we add it in, and here is me. No experience points, no books yet. Um, if we uh, want to change the picture, we can go there and it changes. Um, and I'm going to pass the mic over to Elisa uh, for the next bit of it, the features. Sure. So um, we can add and... We can add books, we can add reviews, and we can edit and remove reviews. So we can add a book. Um, looks like we've got some saved samples here. That is on the users part, but like, this is like your homepage kind of, like if you were actually to click on yourself. Yeah. All right, and that is um, our app. Quinn, Chang, and Aiden. Come on in. Hello. Okay. So this is yeah, this is our um this is our application called Backseat Critic. It's basically a movie review website. Um so this is the home page, and here we kind of like rebuilt like the kind of how the Netflix home screen works, where we have like popular, top rated. And then like oldies and some genres, if you scroll down and you can scroll through them like a carousel. And for this, basically, we had to use like web scrapers, individual web scrapers for each genre using like the IMDb top genres page. Since the uh, API we, we were using to seed our local database didn't have like popular or top rated. So we use some web scrapers for the home page. Uh, yeah, and then, um, so that's the home page. Then there's also a users page where we log all of the users. These are just some samples. Roger and Sandy are both fans. And then if you click on a user, it shows their reviews. It shows the IMDb review. And it's green if it's good. It's red if it's not. 
Sandy liked Bionicles. He didn't like Snow Dogs. So then there's the search function. Um, and in that, you can basically just search for any movie. Iron Man. Click to create. And then you can put in Iron Man Head. I would love to recommend. Uh, it was good. And then give it nine and submit. And then it goes through. And then if you go to the users page, Iron Man Head is there. And he has his favorite movie, The Legends of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. And he loves Iron Man. It was good. And then uh, you go back, search it again, go to it, and delete the review. User is still there, but his review is gone. And that was the app. For presenting, your project looks nice and cool. All right. Next up, we've got Luke, Tara, and Jessica. Let me unmute. Okay. So this is our Pooh Keepers app. It's a zoo animal log app. Sorry, everyone. Uh, so we click, this is our adorable homepage. Bring this to our animals. This is where we manage our animals. Um, we can create logs. Uh, all this zoom stuff's in the way. So we add a log, that's today, they were fed, they pooped, good tiger, they add log, there it is. Um, we go back here, we can add a new animal. I want to bring in a Komodo dragon named George. Boom, there's George. And we can delete our animals. Goodbye, Dee Dee. Um, we can edit our animals in case we get like the age wrong or something. Update, three years old, cool. And now we can manage our poop keepers. So <laughs> we click on this. <laughs> It shows you like who they're managing. We got three animals. Maybe I'm managing too many. I'll get rid of the crocodile. <laughs> um, I can add George to my list because I like Komodo dragons. Awesome. And when I click, when I do that, it automatically adds to my log that it was added to my caretaker list. Uh, going back to poop keepers, we can fire people. Goodbye, Carol. And we can hire new people. Uh, Steve Irwin, he was good. And let's give him a crocodile. Where'd it go? Ooh, bad. I'm, I don't know why. Uh, we had another idea, and it was like a... It was just like another way to do the doctor's appointment <laughs> in a more fun way. And I was just like, let's look at animals, because that's... Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, you know, we were thinking about all of the poop in the lecture, so it's like, let's incorporate that, because why the fuck not? Um, yeah, we were also thinking about doing, like, a restaurant thing, but animals are fun, so that's... Well, then, thanks for sharing. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so, next up, we have Nathan, Lex, and Leslie. Four shirts. Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, sorry, let me get situated. I was laughing so hard at the Carol Baskin from the previous group. That was great. I'm sorry, yeah, that was really funny, guys. Um, okay, I'll, like, go ahead and start, and then I'll pass the baton to the rest of my mates. So, um, I'm gonna, welcome to Star Books. It's a spoof of our Starbucks app. Um, quite there. Let me first log out. Let's, um, it persists, but we're going to log in as Bob, as you guys just saw, just to see some functionality. So in the, when you're a user, 
it will pick up that you are a user and it will send you to the home page, which is all, it renders all the drinks that we have. We can uh, select the menu if I sort it out here, or um, individually like this, if I want hot chocolate, uh, I like some Arlo Palmer and this ridiculously expensive drink. Um, I could also add it, go directly here, um, and now I should have about four or five drinks here. and. This is, uh, and it persists, so I'm going to keep refreshing. <laughs> this took uh, such a long time to persist, but uh, I'm getting a little scared so it doesn't break. But it persists. Um, but that's the basic functionality, but um, I'm going to log, actually, we can edit the avatar too. Let's go quickly. What if I want to change something here? Um, no. Hello, Bob. No, it still persists. And I'm going to log out so my next mate can explain what the other functionality is, and I will navigate whatever you guys say. Can you move to? Yeah, so with the login uh, functionality, we have a couple other uh, interesting things. So if you were to type in a wrong password uh, when you log in, it will throw an error. Um, Um, and then if we register uh, as well, if, if you type in an email that is already being used, it will uh, throw an error as well. No. No. So let's use right. my mail. Boom. If we register, obviously, and it uh, will automatically log you in when you register. Um, and then you have the whole functionality of what you had before. And then if you log out, you will be able to re-log in with that user as well. No. Good sensing. Nice to see you. No problem. Thank you, guys. All right. Next up, we have Zach, Aliu, and Dennis. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, got a little fun little story here for y'all. Um, you know, we were planning on what to do with our with our app. Um, when we decided we want to do like, um, you know, this app to help teams kind of manage their players. Uh, and then, who would you know? Leicester City Football Club kind of called us out of the blue, and they were like, "Can you make this for us?" So we went ahead and did. Um, so here we are at the Leicester City Manager app. Uh, we added in a little uh, fetch here to show them where they stand. Um, uh, right now they're at 12. They're not, they're not really doing too great. They, they got a little work to do. Um, great. And here we go into their team. And here is where they can manage their team. All right. Uh, we got everyone ranging from the keepers all the way down to the coaches over here. Um, and from here, they can do uh, add a player if they want. Um, let's say that their player's name is a basket of potatoes. Uh, it's only about uh, you know twenty centimeters. It is Europe, so you got to do centimeters. But it's also England, so they do pounds. Um, it's going to be about fifty pounds. This uh, this basket of potatoes uses its left foot. It doesn't really have a rating just yet, but we do have an image for it. We submit it, but oh no, you got to fill out everything. All right, so I guess we'll give it a rating of 15. Uh, and we go in, and there's our not working image of basket of potatoes. Um, but it is there. Uh, why did that not work? Let me try that one more time. Uh, actually, you know what? I, yeah, let's do that one more time. Basket of potatoes, it's 20. It's, uh, it's got some feet, let's say left. Um, it's there and try that same image and it's probably not going to work still. Of course not, but you know, it doesn't work so we can just delete it and it stays delete. Oh, it goes right to the bottom, but it stays deleted. Um, and then we can also edit our players, you know, uh, let's say, you know, Wesley Fofana, he had a great year. 
He was doing really good. He got his rating up to 70. He's also really working on his weak foot, too. So he can now use both feet. He's a switch. But at the same time, he just came back from a wedding, probably gained a few pounds. So let's put him at 165. And uh, there he is, Wesley Fofana. He's all switched up. You move when you refresh. And that's more or less it. Thank you for them. All right. Next group, we've got Liana, Mari, and Steven C. Come on down. Okay. Hello, hello, and um, welcome to your virtual fridge. So we all go shopping and buy a ton of vegetables and let them just like rot away forever because they're hidden. But with this nice new app, all you have to do is log what you buy or log what you get from your CSA box delivery. Um, and then you can keep track of things. Um, this also, we don't have it displayed, but it also uh, has the functionality to show like when you add a new item, let's just do this. Let's add, I don't know, a potato. Um, you bought one potato, unit is potatoes, category is produce. Let's add my image URL. Nope. My image URL. Bloop. And it expires in four days. Bought it yesterday. Add it to my fridge. My little <laughs> giant potato pops up here. Um, and you can edit your items as needed. So like, let's say that I have used six of my eggs here. So I can come in and edit them down to six and save. Bum -ba -dum. That, why didn't that work? Hold on. There we go, but it took away that. Well, let's say that I am a proud American and I want to call this an eggplant instead. Uh, maybe I have 12 of them now. I'm going to update. Is it not going? Did my back end shut down? Hold on. Let's try to delete it. Okay, it deletes. We're going to edit. We're going to actually have picked up cilantro. And I have one, and I save. Why is this not working? Um, it was working literally two minutes ago. Um, let's try to rename this. What if I save? What on earth? Um, potato 13, save. Okay, now it worked. Okay, anyway, so yes, you can edit things as needed. Um, you can delete, as we saw, we deleted the aubergine. Um, you can add a new item to your fridge. We kept it super, super simple, y'all. Um, it's one of those times where we really just needed to like brush up on the basics that we've learned in these two weeks. And uh, I think it was a good experience. We didn't do everything we wanted to do. And it doesn't look like ready to show the world, but I think we all, the three of us really helped each other relearn some of those basics. So that's what we've got. Any questions? Um, all right. All right. Keeping it moving. If there's no other questions, next up, we got a dynamic duo. Come on down, Prince and Tenzing. Come on down, Prince Tenzing. We go. Um, we have a. We made an app, a uh, stock app, uh, where you can buy and sell stock. Basically, um, this is just the homepage, which is just the new stuff about the, like, latest new stuff. Um, we wanted to, but yeah, that's basically the news. Uh, if you click on it, you'll go to the news page. Um, any one of them. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh. Uh, then we go to the, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> stocks. there you go. Um, go ahead. Goodbye. So, yeah, these are uh, the stocks tab. Uh, so these are the stocks that you can buy. Uh, we only put like a few here, uh, because, uh, 
because we, we felt like it was, it was more than enough to like get the point across. We could have maybe done more, like 100 or something, but yeah, the, I thought yeah. it was better. Yeah, and we have a timer on the price, so like the price changes every, uh, uh, like maybe like five, ten seconds. Yeah, like so, this one is changing. And like it was getting slower with the more you added. Uh, so I guess it was just like a thing. Yeah. No. Yeah, so the more, so it was working, I think, decently with only six stocks. But uh, when we had more stocks, it was kind of like kind of buggy. Uh, so you can see it kind of like it's lagging a little. It's not changing when it flickers, but it doesn't change. Uh, it was a bug, but we couldn't really fix it. Uh, but we refresh it though. Uh, all the changes pop up. So the stocks, all the stocks change when we refresh. It. <clears throat> Let's we can try buying it. Uh, Let's buy Amazon. Yeah. Too. Okay, so we have like uh, funds here. This is our buying power. We have three thousand dollars. I don't know. Let's buy. Uh, let's buy Bitcoin, I think. Um, so oh. we can buy only one Bitcoin. So <clears> um, and over here, when you have you head up to portfolio, you can see yeah. Yeah, the portfolio contains our uh, yeah what we bought. Our uh, we can add funds on it, and like our names there. <laughs> Some paper hands. Yeah. So we could add uh, like a thousand dollars maybe. Now we wait. Uh, uh, yeah. Wait and see if we wait, it goes uh, up or down. Uh, or you can just reload it on. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, uh, kind of, oh, it dropped. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. I have paper hands, so I'm just gonna sell it. Yeah, you know, there you go. Whatever. Uh, yeah, so we lost money there, even though we deposited a thousand. I wonder if we could deposit it, like we could withdraw. Let me see. Let me see what happens here. Actually, let me do that at the end because I don't want to break it. Um, yeah, so you see, this is we sold it because we have paper hands. So I guess if we refresh it, let me see what happens. Oh, of course. So we buy high, we sell low. Uh, <clears throat> That's what yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, we could also add like a new stock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Supply line stock. Yeah, I think something like that. I guess. Uh, let's do it. I don't know. Let's give it a seventeen thousand. That's how much we paid. I don't think. Okay. You launch it. Hopefully, it shows up. Oh, and there it is. Oh, it changed price already. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. Uh, you could buy also. Uh, I, we can't buy anymore because we run out of funds. Uh, there was this glitch where, if uh, yeah, you see this, it doesn't it doesn't get rid of it. So, so it's I couldn't I didn't want to redouble we re, uh, debug it. So if we sell it again, it turns negative. So we just change this font to say it was shorted it because you can just uh, you know if people don't know what short it is shorting the stock is when you sell stock that's not yours. So you hope that it's, it falls so you can buy it back. And return it at a lower price. So yeah, you can see we short uh, six stocks, and you could just buy them back here. Oh, it, it went up. So yeah, we can't. We can't. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a cool, uh, cool app. Uh, We basically made a little uh, video game site. It's got uh, our main, uh, I guess, uh, for this page at least, our uh, model is kind of uh, video games to companies. Um, so all these games have a, a company and they have a genre, they have a little name. All of this is seeded data. Um, there's a really helpful little, like video game uh, faker uh, like info that we were able to put in. So got a lot of cool stuff from that. Uh, also, we use these avatar, uh, who I think it was somebody earlier was using these same ones. I think it was Alec uh, and their group for the, the book uh, site. They had the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was, it's called like faker avatar image or something. So I thought it was going to be either James Cameron's avatar or Avatar The Last Airbender, neither of which it was. So um, other than that, uh, should fulfill all of our uh, basic needs. We can delete, uh, edit, and uh, create new ones. Sean's creating a new game called Empire, released in 2021. It's $150. It's a shooter game. And we've got this uh, little HTTP 
CS Link. So here, right here, we got Lara Croft in Empire, which is $150, which is mad expensive. Probably won't be that good. Um, so maybe let's make it a little cheaper. Let's uh, make it like, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, 30 bucks. Oh, yeah, big age shoot. So there, we're adjusting the price a little bit. Uh, you know, after Cyberpunk, you know, gamers are, they're, they're not they're not trusting these AAA companies. So 150 ain't going to fly. All right, other than that, um, and we can delete it, because uh, we decided we don't actually want to play that game at all. Uh, we hate video games now. All right, so that's basically it for the uh, games. Oh, there it goes you little robot boys and um troy if you'd like to uh talk about the equipment side okay so basically if you play games well don't you need some gear some equipment to play your game so we have this handy dandy just equipment section uh the first uh section this is like the little hero section discover something new if you're not sure what you're in the market for you can click that button and it just displays uh just random you know gaming equipment that you could possibly use when you play your games if you scroll down uh you will see even more uh products uh and their prices uh just to you know enhance your gaming experience uh one of the stretch goals was this uh equipment has a has many relationship to some reviews but i just i just couldn't figure that out uh, i'm still working on it but what i wanted it to do was when i either i clicked it or something we would see those reviews but you know maybe i'll try to tackle that in my free time but uh that's it for the equipment page we did have a uh, an idea of and you can kind of see the remnants of it this log out uh button at the top right we were kind of messing around with making some kind of user authentication um but I guess we just uh, decided it. Uh, we, we started doing that around Wednesday and uh, looking more into it. We just thought it might be uh, might be a little too complicated for this. And, and we thought, you know, we could make a kind of a fake, uh, like a like not a real, really authenticated, you know, not, not something that actually encrypts a password or anything like that. But uh, I guess uh, we just decided against it. So, yeah, yeah this is uh, basically it. Yeah, the, the, there was an idea that making a fake login ID and make uh, another seed back, uh, seed data on the back end, having the ID and password that matches and we can log in. If not, then we cannot. And uh, make a new create user, same way as a post request to creating another one. Uh, but it's uh, still fake. I really wanted to use a big creep the word like, the right way to use uh, creating an ID and password. So, uh, waiting for Facebook to learn about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's it. Oh, and they, our little potato reference. If you notice, our side at the top is potato games, and then you know, of course, we include a little potato somehow. <laughs> okay. <Maybe> somewhere. <laughs> Well done. Well done, y'all. Excellent work. Uh, we got any questions on this one? Daniel Eli William. What's up, y'all? Um, we kept our app simple. We were thinking, gosh, we need to make a website that can render poems. So that's what we did. Let me share my screen. And um, if you would like to take it away, um, well, so first of all, this is the potato app. Um, if you guys have any better word plays on potato M's, please put them in the chat because they definitely could use some improvement. Um, so we got this fun thing. You could enter a username or you could paint your poem website anonymously. Um, then you get to this poem page. Um, well, if you want to talk about what poems we have out here. Yeah, if you want to go to the page. Um, oh, did, I'm not sharing. I should work on that. Oh, sorry, I had two tabs open, so. Oh, this one. 
so here we are. So when you when you first enter this poem page, it automatically renders our first poem, which is Lady Lazarus by Sylvia Plath. Automatically, we have uh, a seeded file that has a bunch of um, poems already. But say you want to like add your own poem. You can go to the top and click on this new poem form, select a user or remain anonymous, put in a title, and then just write out your poem. So yeah, let's work on one right now. When you submit it, it, um, it pushes it into our seed file on our back end, and it adds it to our sidebar here where you can select the different poems that we have on, I guess, on a file. You can also like all the poems, which is uh, linked to, I think it's linked to to each individual poem on our back end, so that it updates it with another like, and then it you know sends it back. Uh, you can also log out and take us back to that original screen that we had. Just go back in. You can also uh, search for specific poems on our site on the top left there. It's uh, interesting stuff. So that, that was all the front end. If we want to talk about the back end, that was more uh, Eli and Daniel, if you guys want to talk about that some. Um, yeah, the back end is mostly where I stayed. And I it was fun, but um, struggled early on learning Sinatra routes. Um, basically, we have a route for all the poems, a route to how to so that will add a like to whatever poem you happen to be on using that um, ID of the poem. And um, adding a new poem was our post request. And that was basically our three different cred actions. Um, we had a couple of stretch goals. Like um, if we had a bit more time, we would have made it so you could have added yourself as a user, but instead we just have like this drop down list of some preceded users. Um, we also were interested in doing um, uh, like actual authentication, but it sounds like we're going to learn a bit more about that in phase four. So we are very excited for that. Um, well okay. done. Well done. Definitely, definitely cool there. Uh, yeah, floor's open for questions. All right. Where'd you land with this whole multi-line thing? Because I see, I see, I think we need one final round of appreciation, please, for all of our presenters today. Well done. Well done. And um, congrats. Congrats for just getting here, right? We've come a long way but we're not done yet. All of your, like I said earlier, all of your blood, sweat, and tears, we were able to see the, what it was able to produce. So great job on all of your projects. And I guess with that, this, like that's it as far as like work for this phase is concerned. That's it for phase three. So congrats on making it through phase three. And that means you're like more than halfway through this program. We only have two more phases left. Isn't that crazy? Wow.